Hello, my name is Francis Schmidt. I'm a professor of computer animation, uh, and I want to create a series of videos for you to learn how to animate in three dimensions using Soft Dimage, this program right here. Um, first, I want to talk to you about the layout of the screen. Uh, you should be seeing this at 1920 by 1080, uh, 30 frame per second HD video. Um, what we have here on the left over here, this is Soft Image, as you should open it. should be at the same resolution that you have it at home. Um, on the right, we have me up here. And then we have tools that will show you everything I'm doing. Uh, first off, we have our mouse. Um, there's a picture of a mouse there, and I have an actual mouse here, and you'll see my mouse has three mouse buttons. It has a left button, it has a middle button, which is also the wheel, and it has a right button. Um, I also can use the wheel up and down, and you'll see that the mouse will light up when I do that. I want to make sure that you can see all that, and that before you do anything in Softimage, get yourself a three-button mouse. Very easy thing to get. The other thing we have to the right of that down there, and then down there, is my keyboard. This is just a standard old keyboard, but in a 3D program, a keyboard becomes a very important control panel tool. And you'll see that every button I click, you can see as I click it over there on the bottom of the screen. So by watching these videos, you should be able to see everything I'm doing as I'm doing it, and I should be able to explain it to you as well. Not should be, I actually will. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the 3D environment, okay? Um, when we open Soft Image, we get this. And this looks sort of like... Um, one of those old things that they teach you in art school when you're drawing vanishing point perspective because it actually is that. Um, this thing we're looking at here is going to be the end result of all the stuff we do to create 3D animation. But unfortunately, it's uh, at this point not that interesting to us. Um, we need to see this stuff underneath it. And the stuff underneath it starts here when I click this button up here. This is the far more familiar layout for doing anything in three dimensions. Um, I have these four screens. One of them is that other screen we were talking about, but the other three are also very, very important. Um, you're going to see threes coming up a lot, three dimensions, three mouse buttons. That's not coincidental. That is all tied together. Um, as an example, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at how we get to three dimensions um, from this application and then making things look real like movies and TVs and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll just do a minor change there. Okay, uh, you notice when I clicked that button in the upper right hand corner there, that screen blew up. And by default, Softimage gives you this screen now. But really, that's sort of a, a not particularly useful attempt to make things seem friendlier than they are. This is the screen I'm going to put up first. And this screen, this screen is, is gray. We know that. But you have seen it before. If you've taken geometry in high school, you've seen this before. This screen over here, this screen is a piece of graph paper. This is the piece of graph paper you had in geometry in high school where you used to have to draw a point. And interestingly, a point is the most primitive element in any 3D animation that you'll ever do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a point on here as if, as if this was a white piece of paper with blue lines on it, like graph paper, and I had a pencil. Um, but I don't have to do any of that stuff anymore. I get the computer to do that all for me, which is a great plus to this. Um, Right now, it doesn't matter so much if you follow along with what I'm doing in the program. I want you to understand what we're doing, how we're making this stuff, and then in a video right after this, we're going to cover going into the program itself. Um, I'm going to make that point. I'm going to put it right here. And that point I just put on there, which is that little red dot there, that point is at 0, 0, which is called the origin, um, on the x dimension and the y dimension just like on that piece of graph paper. And if you'll note, in the lower left-hand corner down here, it actually says Y and X. This is that piece of graph paper. 
When I put another point anywhere else except on that point, I'm going to get a line. Again, basic geometry. I'll put it out here. And when I put a point anywhere else except on that line, I'm going to get a shape. Uh, that shape is a triangle, and it is the simplest type of all shapes, all two-dimensional shapes, which are going to call polygons. So when we're working in 3D, we start with points, which are literally just X and Y locations. And then when we have two points, we get a line between them. And then when we have three points, we get this thing called a polygon. So we're talking about points, lines, and polygons. Now, in high school, when we were learning all this stuff, in my high school at least, they stopped at Z. They stopped at Y, I should say. We never got to Z. And X and Y was plenty hard. And that's one of the reasons they stopped at Z. Um, my X dimension being left and right, my Y dimension being up and down, the Z that they never talked to us about was in and out. Uh, but this piece of graph paper we got, we got no way to put a Z on here. Just can't happen. It's impossible, basically. No matter what I do, I can't get a Z on here. I can move this around all I want. So the first thing I needed, if I'm going to do it in this mathematic way, is another piece of graph paper. I'm going to click this back up here. Now, you'll note we have a piece of graph paper up here. And the piece we were in down here, this is called front. This is the front of our object. And let's say our object was this mouse, like here, OK? So what I'm saying is, if this is the front of my object, we'll do it like that. That would be the front down there of an X and Y. But if I want to put a Z in it, I need to see the top of my object. I need to be able to look down on it. And we have another piece of graph paper. Right over here, this says top, right there. And if I click somewhere, and I should be able to pull these out eventually. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to modify this a little bit. Come on, give it to me. There we go. There we go. I'm moving the point into the previously in our other piece of graph paper, mythical Z dimension. See that? Now it's just another piece of graph paper. Basically, you can imagine, I just now have two pieces of graph paper if you want. Um, this one lets me do the front of the object, up, down, left, right. This one lets me do the top of an object, which would be left, right, and back and forth. And that's great. You'll see that when I move something here, I don't see it move at all in that piece of paper down there. Now let's say I wanted to get something on the side of the object. I need another piece of graph paper. I need this piece right here, which is called my right side. So as soon as we added that Z dimension, we got two extra pieces of graph paper. We have to have them. There's no way we can get around what we're doing without having those two extra pieces of graph paper. So imagine again if we had our mouse as an example. If this was the front of it, this is the top of it, and this is, well, we'll say that this is the right of it, okay? So that is what is being drawn in this window here, the front, this window here, the top, and this window here, the right. Now then, what's this? This is the payoff. This is the window where we actually see the things the way we see them out here. What this program is trying to do what every 3D program is trying to do is it's trying to create anything you've ever seen or could imagine seeing. To do that, it has to fake the way we see stuff. And here's a thing, and it's kind of a heavy thing. We see things wrong. Um, this is the way this stuff really is, the front, the top, the right. And there's a number of reasons why we know this, not the least of which is that we have these here parallel lines that graph paper from high school. If we look at those parallel lines, parallel lines will stay parallel forever. But when we look over here, which is much more like what we see, those parallel lines no longer stay apart. In the distance, they're getting closer together. Now, this is how we see everything. If you look around you right now, you should be able to see two lines you know are parallel, and that you know in the distance they come to a point. That is vanishing point perspective. That is, 
that is this, this survival mechanism that we have developed over millions of years. And the survival mechanism says things that are further away from us are not as important as things that are right close up to us. And that's why as things go further away from us, from our eyes perspective, they look smaller, further away. Now, with that said, how are we going to get something usable out of this program for you? Um, I am going to do something I'm going to recommend you do all the time. When you're learning 3D, uh, you should restart whenever you're lost. And you'll be lost a lot. There's nothing wrong with that. But whenever you feel a little bit lost, just do a new scene. That's what I'm going to do to start right now. New scene. No. This will go to all four screens. Good. Okay. Now, when the people who first made this stuff going back 20, 30, 40 years ago started making it, they realized very quickly that there were certain shapes they used over and over again. Um, we talked about point and edge and polygon and all that, and originally there were programmers writing the location of each point, X, Y, Z, and then writing how the lines were connected, and then writing how the polygons were connected, then writing how they all looked together, and then, and then putting it into a piece of code to generate an image and taking a picture of it and processing it in the lab and then looking at it and seeing what was wrong and then going back, and it was a lot of work. So very rapidly they realized there's certain things that we're using all the time. We're always using cubes, we're always using spheres, we're always using cones, and those formulas are known to us. So rather than writing the code for that every time, what if I just wrote the code once and then said, I want a cube there, 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 I want a sphere going, going forth like that. And this is one of the earliest forms of modeling. Modeling being making these shapes of objects that we're going to, uh, we're going to animate as we get deeper into this. Uh, this type of modeling is called primitive modeling. Now, looking at the Softimage screen, you'll see way over here on the left, we have this bar. Uh, it should say model by default. And it has get, create, and modify. These are different things that we can throw into our interface to do things with. We're going under get and primitive, primitive modeling, get primitive polygon mesh. When I go to get primitive polygon mesh, you'll see that I have a bunch of shapes, just a description of them. I'm going to pick one nearly randomly like that. Okay. And when I do, a bunch of things will happen. I get covered up over there. I'm going to pull myself back down there. Um, we got this shape, which is called a torus, um, otherwise known as a donut. And we got this box. This box is called a property panel. Well, that's bad. Why, why did I just? I'm, I'm going to pause for one moment, folks. Uh, and we will, we will be right back. <laughs> 